Now, it's no surprise, this is our BSB special episode, and we're gonna be talking to various riders coming through for next year, and also even a visit from Stuart Higgs, race director. Stay tuned. So we're here with the man that runs the show, BSB director Stuart Higgs. So Stuart, after what was a fantastic 2021 season, what have we got to look forward to for 2022? Well, first and foremost, hopefully uh, an undisturbed year in terms of uh, the calendar and the uh, ability for full spectator numbers uh, to the events. We ended extremely strongly at Brands Hatch. Uh, obviously, the current situation is, has disrupted things a little bit again, uh, but we've got to be optimistic and look forward to the season starting in April. But certainly, uh, a regular calendar of 11 events running from April through to October will be certainly much more relaxed for ourselves as the organisers, uh, certainly for the teams and the riders and everybody else involved in the championship, and then most importantly, again, for the spectators, because uh, races back to back to back is, um, you know, was a big ask next year. So, yeah, um, strong finish, consolidate through the winter, lots of um, rumour, conjecture, deal making, yeah. deal breaking in some <laughs> cases, and uh, as ever, a fantastic championship on the track. Perfect. With the development of the super sport rules, how do you see that growing the class moving forward? That's probably the biggest significant individual change. I mean, it's been a concern to us. We flagged it, obviously, along with other uh, international racing bodies a number of years ago, that the 600 four-cylinder product range was pretty flat. No. Uh, new models from most of the manufacturers that had been uh, regular uh, campaigners in the class. So something had to change. The Supersport um, production bikes were being redefined across manufacturers, being twin and three cylinders, uh, different uh, CCs. And it's, it, it's been a case of now that technology is evolved, uh, particularly with electronics. We have a much better way of managing parity between bikes of different shapes and sizes. So uh, whereas it would have been a big headache probably five years ago to have a, uh, a 900cc uh, twin racing against a 600cc four cylinder, uh, we, we can do it quite easy now. But you know, if you go back to Super Sport in the, the late 90s, you know, there were 750 twin cylinder Digicatis and uh, 604 strokes. So it's, it's a bit of a, uh, going back to the future in some ways, but certainly getting multiple manufacturers back involved. I mean, you know, we're gonna see, we've got Kawasaki and Yamaha as the staple diet. Uh, there is the ability for Honda to be in the championship with the Asian 600 model that can come to the UK. We have this philosophy now that if a bike is made anywhere, it can be raced somewhere, if that, if that makes sense. But Ducati V-Twin obviously has raced with us for a number of years in the Ducati 1.8 series with some slight changes that can come into the super sport class. And we were the first series in the world to run the, the three cylinder Triumph 765. And we would expect that to continue into 2022 as well. So lots of sights and sounds in the class. We also have our own homegrown GP2 class, which is our prototype version uh, of Grand Prix Moto 2. Uh, that stays on a 600 to 675 three cylinder platform. But we're looking at bringing the 765 powered bike into that again with ECU control and the last couple of races of 2021 we saw the really uh, fabulous Kramer bike which is a, a KTM powered 890 twin so it, the philosophy is with that middleweight class of have having multiple bikes of multiple configurations because it is a thing from the promoted racing front that there is a bit of a it all looks the same fear and having a class that genuinely can give different sights different sounds just makes it more interesting and more accessible to teams as well. Oh, I for one can't wait. Thanks for joining us. I look forward to it. So we're joined by Ryan Vickers. It was a year of circuit records, ups, downs. You, you put it in your words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, to be honest, it was my best season in BSB as a, as a whole. Um, it's P12 in the championship, and like you say, we got some good results. Um, All-time like record at Cadwell and stuff like that, so there's plenty of positives to take from the year. Um, and it was really good. I mean, that's given me the opportunity, as you can see, FHA Racing BMW for 2022. Um, really, really excited to join the team. It's, um, it's a great opportunity, and you know, I feel after the three years that I've had with Lee Hardy, it's, um, 
the time to move on and it's and I'm at a point now I've got enough experience and stuff like that, I'm ready to make the step, you know. I feel like moving into into the team, um, there's a lot of support, the bike's proven. The M1000 RR did a great job um, last year, so it's rookie season as a new bike. Um, so obviously going into this year is obviously going to be more improvements and yeah, looking forward to working with the team and um, getting going. So obviously new bike brings new challenges. What's your approach for 2022? How has that changed? Well, obviously it's just go testing and understand the bike, understand it, you know. I'm not going to go there and try and reinvent the wheel. Um, I want to go there on pretty much the bike that Peter's got and developed and just see how it is, you know, and then work with the team to, to make it suit me, you know. Um, but on a race bike, I mean, once it's in its window, it's never going to be far away, you know. Obviously, Pete's six at three and probably 20 kilos heavier than me. So there is going to be a difference, but that's just stuff that's easy to figure out and bits and bobs. But mainly, it's me just getting comfortable. I want to understand what the BMW likes to have, you know, that's the thing. And if you can understand how to ride a bike, then you, you then know how to adapt to situations better. Um, and I think that's the crucial bit, is not to go into the team and try to change things and stuff like that, you know. I'm, I'm still a relatively new into the championship compared to some people and people like Peter as well. Um, and I'm with a team with a lot of experience. So I want to go in, I want to learn. Um, and I think if we work hard as a team and use the time the best we can, then I think we can put a really good package together and get some great results. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you in the new colours. Good luck for 22. Thank you, cheers. So we're here with 2021 British Superbike Champion, Taz McKenzie. Thank you for joining us. I know you're very busy, but you're fresh with the bike, full of confetti still. How does it feel? Has it sunk in yet? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's sunk in now. Um, it was just a, an incredible feeling for me at the end of the year to, to finally get it wrapped up and, um, and to win three races at Brands was even better. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a hectic off season for me. It's normally a bit more relaxed, but I'm enjoying it. And um, yeah, just looking forward to getting going for next year now. I mean, you had a pretty turbulent 2021, ups and downs. Yeah. What was kind of, what was your real high point for you? Kind of when you realised, you know, this is, this is it. Yeah, I think um, Saturday night of Brands after winning the first race and extending that points lead, it, it wasn't done by any means at that point, but I could definitely relax a little bit more and um, take a few more chances, which I like doing. So um, going into that first race at, at Brands on the, the Sunday um, and to, to pass Tommy, get it across the line and finally do it, it was just, uh, yeah, it was just amazing. It, Weekends don't like don't go like that normally, especially the last round. Anything can happen, but um, for some reason, I don't know. Someone was maybe looking down on me. I'm not sure, but it all the stars aligned, and uh, yeah, as I said, just had the perfect weekend, and and to get the championship done at the same time was uh, just amazing, and and yeah, it's been good. So you've just announced you've re-signed for McCams for 2022. What's the plan for next year, apart from win it again? Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm coming back with the, the number one plate, so try and retain that, definitely. Um, I'm, it's a new experience for me coming back, um, champ, being champion in the same championship. So, uh, yeah, we've got a few changes on our bike. The team's pretty much staying the same, which I'm really pleased about. And um, it's just uh, it's going to be another exciting year. It's, as I said, it'll be a new experience coming back as champion and, and uh, a different year for me and BSV. So, uh, goals to win, of course. Um, we had a, an amazing season between me and Jason in the Cam Yamaha. Um, I think there's only 12 races we didn't win, so it's going to be hard to replicate that, but we were trying our best to do so. No, oh, fantastic. We wish you all the best and uh, good luck for 2022. No worries, thank you. So we're here with Rory Skinner after what was a very impressive rookie season. Talk us through it. To be honest, I don't really know where to start. You know, this year for me was just like, it was, it was crazy. It was so hectic with the, with the reduced schedule and uh, all the rounds being so close together. But yeah, I mean, I loved every minute of it. Uh, Knock Hill was for me my, my highlight of the year to, to come out of the season with two podiums in a pole position. It was more than I ever could have imagined. I mean, looking forward to 2022, can you hope for much more or just carry on on that foundation? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Obviously, I learned a lot this season. There's a lot of things coming from a Super Sport 600 to a Super Bike that you know I, I've taken a lot on, a lot more in my head. So, yeah, you know, this winter I'm really, I'm really looking forward to just being the best I can be and working to all those little weaknesses that I noticed through the season. Just 
just from spending a couple of years in a 600 to go for a super bike, they just kind of show a little bit more. So I'm really looking forward to, uh, to spending, spending my winter working hard. And you know, the guys at FSD are great. They, uh, they've got all their trust in me and I've got all my trust in them. So yeah, I'm looking forward to next season. Well, we can't wait to see you out on track. Best of luck for the next season. Thank you very much. So we're joined here with British Super Sport champion, Jack Kennedy. New colours for this year, but just quickly talk us through 2021. How did it go? Yeah, it was a, it was a crazy year, you could say, with the, um, the intense racing at the front of the Super Sport. And had some great moments, obviously, because we won the championship, but also had some bad moments as well, getting taken out of races, which was... It's, it's hard to get your head around because it's, it's something that's out of your control and you've lost points over something that you didn't do. So it's quite hard to uh, accept it in a way, but I suppose you have to accept it and move on from it and just worry about the next race. And um, it was a battle between like five or six of us for the championship came down to the wire and you could say we were on the, on the lesser bike that nobody chose, but um, had an amazing team around me that got the most out of the bike and gave me a bike that I could absolutely ride the wheels off and the KTX suspension I suppose allowed me to do that this year so it was a it was a hard year but very enjoyable year and um, the team I had around me as well were three sort of good mates of mine that are around my age as well so I nearly just felt like a few lads going racing but at the same time we were serious when it came down to the good stuff. No definitely well Quite obviously, you've changed from green to blue for next season. Talk us through the approach for 2022. The approach will be the same as always, you know, put the work in behind the scenes. I never stop working on myself and trying to improve myself um, because it's the stuff, it's the work you put in behind the scenes that nobody sees. That's the work that matters and that's the stuff that comes to light when you're in these battles for, for these big races at, at longer laps. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bring myself um, to the track as, as fit and as ready as I can be and you'll want to bring your A game if you want to beat me in the championship this year, next year. Great to hear it. Well, we look forward to seeing you sideways everywhere again and more great racing. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. We'll, uh, we'll be giving a full send everywhere and putting on a show for the cameras if we can and uh, I'm looking forward to getting out racing again and having some good battles in Super Sport because it's what I love doing. So new kids on the block, Cat Foss Suzuki by Hawk. We're joined by a superbike rider after a great, impressive rookie season. Bjorn Esterman, tell us how that went. Yeah, it was good, eh? I think uh, as, a, as a rookie team, as you say, as our debut season, we, we went right. We, we scored points on a sort of regular occurrence and we finished with the best result of 11th, which was great. So double digits in your first season, that can't have been easy. Yeah, we were pretty happy, you know, when we set out uh, the realistic goal of the season or the team goal of the season was just to score a point initially, just be realistic. And we well uh, overachieved. In fact, we, I think we got 11 points or something, so double figures, as you say. Fantastic year for the first year out for the squad. And it's proved by the results now onto a satellite team. What does that mean for you for next year? Yeah, I think it's always important to get help from the right areas and no one knows a Suzuki better than Hawk uh, and Steve and all the guys that back at the, at the factory team, you know. So yeah, hopefully uh, with the added uh, support package and, and the upgrade for the bike that we have going into the new year, we can uh, improve uh, on track and off. Oh, fantastic. We wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much. So on the other half of the garage, we've got their super stock rider, Levi Day. Impressive season again. So all round the team had a good year. How's it looking for next year? Yeah, no, it's been really good, thanks, James. Really enjoyed the first year with Powerside Racing and, and their first year in the, in the championship as well. So I think, yeah, the whole team did, did well. You know, Bjorn did really well on the Superbike as well. So both looking to progress, uh, you know, next season to, to step it up and do better than what we did this year. Um, had some good top 10 results in Stock 1000. So I think now that we sort of know how the bike works and how the team work well together, we'll um, see some good progress for next season. Yeah, definitely. So after a strong first year, How's your approach going to change to capitalise on that? I think this next year, just try and focus less on the development of the bike and learning, you know, the gearing and what suspension we were going to run and that sort of stuff. And now we can focus more on, you know, just getting those last little tents out of the bike and stuff. The super stock class, as all the classes at BSB are so, the depth of field is so tight that if we can find another two, three tenths of a second, you, you could be fighting for the podium most weekends. So that'd be a nice goal to sort of aim for and see where we can go from there. Well, we wish you all the best, Levi. I appreciate it, mate. Thank you. So rounding out the garage, we've got now new team manager, James Ellison. Probably a job in the paddock you haven't done or a race series you haven't done. So 
What's this new challenge looking like for you? Yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, obviously, I've raced my whole life for you know, 27 years, but I've been a professional racer, and that's all I've known. But over those 27 years, I've learned a lot of, you know, gained a lot of experience from everybody, um, from various different team managers, looking at how each team manager worked, and I'm kind of, you're kind of able able to pick out the good and the bad parts of, you know, your experiences. Basically, I've had good experience with team managers, I've had bad experiences with them. So I'm just here to try and help Brad and the Powerside team out. Um, you know, learn from kind of the, some of the mistakes I've made over the years, some of the mistakes team managers have made over the years, help with my experience, help with the riders. Obviously, I've, as being a rider for so long, I can kind of relate to them a little bit more than maybe, you know, team managers that haven't raced before. So I'm here just to kind of help out a little bit. Brad's got two of the most successful dealerships in the UK at the minute. So one was just opened in Derby very recently, so he's got a lot of work on. And hopefully I can take a bit of pressure off him and, and try and help him run the team. So. I'm actually really looking forward to it, so yeah, it'll be good. No, fantastic. It sounds like a great team, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Cheers.